Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 75342, a Republic fighter tank from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 262 pieces, 6 minifigures, and will retail for $39.99 in the US. This set does not come out until April 26, 2022, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here is the build of the Republic fighter tank, the fighter tank itself, and this is personally my first and only LEGO Republic fighter tank I've ever gotten, but as a whole I'd say I'm pretty satisfied with it. I really love how they did the entire base, it hugs the ground pretty hard, but they still manage to put a lot of texture and detail into it, and I think that's really great for scaling reasons, because it doesn't make the base too big, but still looks really nice. You can see there's numerous sticker parts at the front right here, and you have pretty much the same ones mirrored on the other side. Parts of the tank go up a little bit higher towards the back, but on the whole the base is very flat, just lots of different angles and curves and whatnot, and I think the shaping there is pretty fantastic. You can see there's these large cans on the sides, these can be rotated up or down, and they have a spring load shooter in them, so if you actually want to shoot them out, you just push down right here, and there you go. I definitely think the tank itself looks better without the spring load shooter blast in there. And comparing this to the source material, this probably should be centered a little bit more, but I guess it was moved up to make room for the spring loaded shooter. Which is a fine trade-off for a play feature, but if you want this more for display, you might want to customize it a little bit. Regardless though, you can also see there's another stickered part right there, and there's the exact same cannon build on the other side, and each of them can be moved individually, they're not like linked together or anything. And then coming to the main body of the build, you can see the side right here looks very flat. That was my first impression when I first saw pictures of the set, and having it in hand definitely looks better, the flat is not as jarring, however a little bit more dimension there would have been appreciated. Just a smoother transition from this flatter bottom up to this peak. It just feels kind of abrupt. It's not terrible, it definitely looks worse in the pictures than it is like actually in person, but it's still not in my opinion the best way they could have represented this build. There's also this large cockpit door right here which can be opened up. That's connected on using two Ninjago Skulkin arms, and that gives you access into the interior where there's tons of studs. This looks very spacious, however it doesn't actually have as much room as it looks. You can very easily fit one clone in right here and then close this back up around them. However, if you want to get a second in there, it's definitely a little bit rougher. You can fit them in, but you have to like sort of put them in at an angle. There's nowhere for them to sit comfortably. But yeah, if I put this guy back in now, you can see there is two clone troopers in there when I have this closed up. If you prefer, you can also load a troop in from the back. You see that door opens up right there, and inside there is a black CMF minifigure stand, and then it gets into the same interior that you saw before. You can see there's the pilot sitting up there. Now you still can't sit a clone back here. However, if you wanted to lay one down, it could definitely fit in, you could even attach it to the studs if you really try. So if you really want to have them laying down in there, like, you can do that. However, I don't know, I feel like that's probably not the best way of storing that trooper. So my recommendation is, if you actually want to have all three troopers in the vehicle at once, just sort of throw them in there. It's obviously not the best option, but it's definitely the most convenient, because then if you want to get them back out, you can just pour them back out. But speaking of which, now let me show you where the third trooper goes. So it might be pretty easy to tell, but the third trooper goes immediately above that. You can open up this little hatch on the top of the tank, and then then place the final clone trooper in there. If you have the clone trooper standing up, you can actually have him functioning sort of as a turret for the tank, actually being able to shoot out like with his blaster and everything. You can also have the clone trooper sit down if you want, however unfortunately even when he's sitting down you can't actually close the tank around him. So if you have him in here, his head's always going to be sticking out. That's a little unfortunate, I wish there was a way to like close it up with him in there, but I suppose it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is something to be aware of. And yeah of course once you have all your troopers in there, you can close his back back up. A final few aesthetic things, this cockpit piece out the front right here, there is a gap between it and the rest of the build. That gap's a little annoying, I wish that wasn't there. Again, not the biggest deal, but still not great to see. The cockpit piece is also covered in stickers, which I hate when you have to put three stickers in one piece. But the end result does look good, just annoying to have to put them on. There's a sticker with this green design at the top of the tank, and you have these builds of like imaginary windows out the front. And then finally, turning this over, you can see the mechanism underneath. Not too much going on, but it does actually look fairly pretty from the bottom, which is impressive. Aside from this tan piece right here, the rest of it looks really good. Which, this is not a set that needs to look good from the bottom, but it's impressive to see, because sets normally don't. Anyway, I'm showing you this because there's little wheels down here, you have a total of four of them, and that's what allowed this to actually go along the ground. And yeah, the movement with the tank actually feels very smooth. There's a little bit of roll to it, but also it feels like it can just sort of slide around. It makes it feel very much like a sci-fi vehicle, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. But that's about it for the actual build of the Republic fighter tank, so now let's move on to the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, we have two 187th Legion clone troopers, and right off the bat, technically these guys are not canon, I'm not super Clone Wars knowledgeable, but from what I've heard, the 187th Legion is number one, barely in any official media, and number two, in all the official media it's appeared in, they're actually brown, not purple. 
The purple design was made up by Hasbro for toys, and for some reason LEGO went with the toy design rather than the canon design, which if you're a hardcore Clone Wars fan, I get why that might be annoying. However, personally, I think this is way better because purple is a hilarious color and these guys look awesome. I genuinely think the purple looks really cool on them. I like this little bit of extra armor that goes over top their normal armor right here, and the design of their helmets are really cool too, like those little sand blue lines. It would have been cool if they had like dull molded legs to actually give them proper purple boots, because it is a little unfortunate that the purple does cut off like right at the shin. That being said though, I think on the whole these guys are very very good and look pretty fantastic. Not a ton to say about them because at the end of the day they are still clone troopers which are just a very common thing to get, but in terms of clone trooper variants, yeah these are really good ones. And of course they are phase 2 clones. And then if I remove their helmets, unsurprisingly they have the standard clone trooper face underneath, exact same one on both of them. Nothing new but cool to see they're sticking with that face because it's much better than the old angry clone face. Yeah, that's about all I have to say for these two. Pretty good overall. And then the next two figures in the set we have a 187th Legion Clone Commander, as well as Mace Windu. The Clone Commander follows a very similar aesthetic to the other two clones, though this time around he has a different helmet and much more intense armor. He's got these bits of brown in his armor which seems to match the color of Mace Windu's robes, which is pretty cool. Personally I prefer the look of just the regular Phase 2 clones, but this is a nice alternate one to have. And then in terms of his accessory it's slightly different, he has the larger blaster with a Harry Potter candlestick piece at the end, and it creates for a pretty nice looking gun. I think the cutoff on the leg printing looks a lot more natural here too, and back torso print is about what you'd expect. Removing the helmet of course, same exact face print, but yeah, pretty good. And then this new Mace Windu is excellent. So unfortunate for Republic Gunship fans, this is pretty much the same exact figure that came in the Republic Gunship, but better. The torso and legs have come in a few other sets before, but this face print was exclusive to the Republic Gunship, so now the Republic Gunship face is being reprinted here, but unlike the Republic Gunship, this time around he comes with arm printing. You can see on his arm printing there's some folds in his robes, as well as a little bit of armor at the very end that has the Jedi crest on it, and then on the other arm it's pretty much just the armor without the crest. The robes themselves look really good, I don't really have any complaints, the skin complexion is printed correctly so no issues there. With the face print I prefer a more neutral face, but this is a nice variant to get. And back torso print, once again, very good, yeah this is a great version of Mace Windu and it's always nice to get a purple lightsaber too of course. Yeah, pretty good all around. And then the final two minifigures are two battle droids, obviously not much to say about them, their design has not changed since 1999. But it hasn't changed for a reason, it is a very good design, always nice to get more. And something kind of cool about them is they come with gunmetal grey guns instead of just black ones. Which I know is not as uncommon as it used to be, but there was a long long time in LEGO Star Wars history where the only blasters we got were just the plain black ones. So it's nice to get some color variation, even if it has become more common. But yeah, of course, not much else to say about them. They're battle droids, they're about what you'd expect. So, what are my overall thoughts on this set? I do like this set quite a bit. I'm very far from the world's biggest Clone Wars fans, I don't have much connection to this vehicle for, like from the source material. However, I do like the purple clone figures, I think that's really funny and I love getting like alternate colors for characters that we already have. And the Republic Fighter Tank build is good enough. Looking at pictures from the source material, there's definitely things that could be improved about it, but on the whole I think it's fairly solid, and it is a nice size. Another thing is the price, $40 is stretching it a little bit for this, $30 would have been absolutely perfect, $40 isn't terrible, especially when you get like the Mace Windu with arm printing. There is a total of 4 new figures in the set, 3 of which are unique, so that does help justify the price a little bit, however if you're not like in a rush to get this, I recommend you wait till it's on sale, because it's definitely better for something like $32 instead of $40. But those are just my thoughts, you guys have to let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do LEGO videos like this almost every day, including early reviews just like this one. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, liking and subscribing helps ensure that you'll see it when it's posted, and also really helps support me and the channel. But I think that's about all I have to say for this one. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!